Besides J.R.R. Tolkien, Alexander Dumas hands down is my favorite writer, so things are about to get heated. And if you saw L'Etoile Mousquetaire d'Artagnan, part of my French, and loved it, this review might sting a little bit. Or a lot. Hey, I'm Robin, I love history, but I'm bad at watching movies, so here we talk about historical film and TV. This particular adaptation of the iconic book is a French, German, Spanish and Belgian baby that kinda in a way writes its own story and doesn't seem to care at all how it measures to its predecessors. A good thing? We'll get to it. If anything, this one is gonna be remembered for is definitely visual style. It's dark, it's muddy, it feels like 1627 France and I can live with that. Director Martin Bourboulon does a really good job capitalizing on his experiences gained previously in the film Eiffel because the dark and yellow and brown color scheme is pulled straight from that one. He also didn't forget the main actor who played Eiffel. Did we just become best friends? Yep! Basically be ready for darkness. Luckily I'm not talking Game of Thrones season 8 episode 3 kind of darkness but looks like the majority of scenes were shot using only candle and natural light, so expect those darker ones to look quite grainy and don't bother getting off your couch to check the resolution. Cinematography for this type of genre I'd say is actually close to flawless. There is, however, one important fight from the book that is shot as a long continuous take, just like the one in The Revenant and Outlaw King except there's an additional camera in and out motion that follows the regular movement and strikes for some it might work, it didn't work for me, it just made me feel dizzy. Now the story itself, even though it does borrow many main elements from the book, it doesn't feel like it centers around musketeers. It's like not delivering on your YouTube video title, not a good look. The main stage is set as a conflict between Catholics and Protestants, and the main cast just has to fit on it one way or another while carrying their own subplot baggage with them. The film tries too hard to present itself as this intriguing semi-epic adventure and spreads way too thin, I think. We never really get to know our musketeers, and if you look really close, D'Artagnan's story doesn't even matter that much, he's just there to connect the dots. He's never in real danger except maybe from the beginning of the film. He's just kind of there. At least Athos has something to work with. Speaking of whom, Vincent Cassel surprised me as Count de la Fer. Usually he is known for playing this villainous characters with somewhat arrogant and sometimes creepy attitude, but it was a delight to see a more wise and philosophical and sensitive side of him. D'Artagnan is okay, that's all I got on that guy. He's just okay. <sighs> Aramis looks like a dirty outlaw that rolled into town to rob a bank and not a definition of elegance. And Porthos is shorter than anyone else around him and we are talking about the man who's supposed to be an intimidating giant capable of knocking down the bull with his fist. It feels to me like the casting on purpose downplayed all the qualities of those characters that made them so different and so recognizable. On the other hand, combat does look nice. Nothing flashy about it, straight on point and realistic. Strikes and thrusts are precise, quick and deadly, and if someone has a pistol and someone doesn't... It would be nice to see though at least one prolonged suspenseful duel when you just don't know how the dice is gonna fall. By now I watched the film twice just so my bias and childhood memories don't get in the way of this review but one thing never changed. What's up with the uniforms? Both King's Musketeers and Cardinal's Guard. Where am I on the timeline? Wild West? It's the coat. What's up with the coat? Musketeers look like a bunch of unshaven vagabonds or road raiders. Robin Hood merry men at the best. I mean, the horses are more presentable and cleaner than their owners. And that's supposed to be a king's royal guard. You know, at that time those places were reserved exclusively for nobles and in a way they are a face of a royal court. Eva Green is a good my lady, I like her in that role. Well used look and talent, so great selling point right there for the film. But every time I personally looked at her, I just see the less disturbed version of Penny Dreadful, at least in this role, and I wish I could get over it, but I can't. The main villain plotter Richelieu is a sad, tired man like me that does things only because the script says so. And I'm not saying his version is worse than Christoph Waltz's version of Richelieu, who was just simply miscast in that role in my humble opinion, but he doesn't come across as the man that everybody would be scared to look straight into the eye to and get on the wrong side of him because that's exactly who that man was. He ran France. Now this is Richelieu. 
this is Richelieu, that is Richelieu. Overall, the film felt to me as the warm-up act to a main performer that comes out later this year in December. And I will be attending, but primarily because I want to see if some of my predictions will come true. I think it's going to be an uh, escalation of events that will lead to the siege of La Rochelle, which was a grand event in French history, and hopefully we'll get some mid-size battle where our heroes will shine one way or another. Most likely my lady will be presented as a victim and her deeds will be justified and probably she will have some sort of a redemption arc. We'll see if I'm right or wrong on that one. Some of the D'Artagnan stuff that nobody really will care about. And of course, some Athos drama. Any horses in that one? And hopefully more horses. As a standalone swashbuckler type, the film is not too bad to look at, but it fails to deliver that sense of camaraderie and friendship that is the very essence of Dumas' book. And without it, it's just a setting for some action and a fancy talk. Just good enough to throw in the background if you're learning some French or take a look over your shoulder at the good sword swing while you're chopping your veg. For any Dumas nerd like me, all I have to say to you... Fly, you fools! <laughs>